Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena action. Doing this Warrior deck, my uh, second Warrior run since I began the new series. First Warrior run was rather embarrassing. This one is off to a rocky start, just one and one. Maybe I have too many two drops. I don't know. Deck seems alright, though. Let's go ahead and keep on playing. And hope that the one loss so far was a fluke. Let's get some of my lucky water over here where I can reach it. Ah, uh, yes, take a sip of that. Mmm. Ah, hydration. Mm. So fall is upon us here in Madison, Wisconsin. It's really cold the last week, but today is hot. I'm actually playing shirtless. Oh, bet you wish you could see that. Ah, uh, why did I say that? We're moving on. If the thing wants to find us a game, that is... All right, here we go. Kind of laggy right now for some strange reason. The graphics get changed to be high values. Just make sure these are on low. Yeah, they're on low. I don't really know why that was so laggy, but okay. So, with the coin, I think I will just keep these three drops and mulligan slam execute, because that's more of a later game combo. Against a paladin, of course, it would be nice to get some early action. Not that that will ever happen. And uh, Cow Magni is the paladin here. Hopefully his start is as slow as mine. If he can pass on turn one, that'd be great. Because... On turn two, no matter what he plays, almost no matter what he plays, I'm sure there's something I'm forgetting, Harvest Golem will be a good response. And Death's Bite, our new weapon here, could be useful as well. This is actually potentially a combo with both the Frothing Berserker and the Battle Rage, but of course, things really have to go right for you to actually pull that off in any kind of combo horrific fashion. Please just pass the turn. Thank you! And of course, can I get a Zombie Chow turn one? No. Not a chance of that ever happening. Let's, uh... Just hope that my coined out golem will be good enough. Now, there's also a greedy option here. I could actually coin into the berserker. All right, we'll try it. Since I have two of them, I might as well play one now. Let's see if I can get lucky. If he plays a good creature here, I can play my other berserker and then use my current one to kill off his recruit. A paladin's not very likely to kill a berserker on turn three. Turn four, when he opens up Blessing of Kings, Con uh, Hammer of Wrath, and Truce of Champion, is of course a different story. It looks like he's got a pretty slow start. Of course, his slow start's actually a little bit annoying to deal with because it means he's putting creatures on the board. And he also got a secret. Well, if I'm a day older than two, that secret is Avenge. So, the obvious play here is to use the Frothing Berserker here and have it get pumped up, but I'm really pretty sure that's Avenge. So I'm going to run at this recruit, and then I'm going to use my Wolf Rider to pick off his thing that gets buffed by the Avenge. It's not Avenge. Alrighty, well, you live and you learn. So it's not Noble Sacrifice either, or Revenge, or Redemption. So it could still be Repentance, or Eye for an Eye. I could try to waste the Repentance or the Eye for an Eye with the Wolf Rider, but the problem is then the recruit will kill it, so it's not really that much of a, a win. I could Battle Rage for two cards, but that's a bit slow. Let's grab the golem here and let's see if that gets repented. It does. Okay, well, golem's a pretty good thing to have repented. Of course, it'll die to this recruit, but at least I get a damaged golem back. Out of the deal. And had I played this other berserker, he would have, you know, gotten buffed up and everything when I attacked. But uh, then he would have died. After the repentance. Looks like he's planning to play a consecration here, making me all the gladder that I had a harvest golem eat up the repentance. Because I still get a creature on the board here, and that is... Not to be dismissed. I did miss a chance for Battle Rage for two cards, but that's fine. All right, let's go ahead and uh, grab the other Berserker down. Grab the other Berserker down. Good grammar, Boris. Good grammar. And maybe I can do a Commanding Shout Battle Rage combo next turn, but I doubt it. Oh, maybe. Hold on. That's different. Do you have anything else? Okay. Well, this is a pretty good creature to play into a play Commanding Shout with, so let's go ahead and grab the Commanding Shout. See what we get for our card. And think, I could play Wolf Rider, leaving everything very vulnerable to Consecration or Avenging Wrath if he has either one of those. Um, or I could play Battle Rage. No, let's just go ahead and play Wolf Rider. So we'll run the Wolf Rider into that. And then we'll run the Damaged Golem into that. The Frothing Berserker. The Frothing Berserker doesn't grow as much as you might think because um, only he himself got damaged. And I am still vulnerable to a consecration with this. 
But I'm hoping he doesn't have a second consecration. Even if he does, that'd be most of his turn. He'd have five cards left to my five, soon to be six. So I'm actually still doing okay, even if he consecrates. Although I'd rather he didn't. All right, he concedes. That's even better. So that went pretty well. Commanding shout MVP right there, gotta say. I am quite pleased with how that turned out. Sweet. So what else could I have done that turn except for commanding shout? Well, I could have used Death's Bite to kill the Abomination. That would have been my whole turn. The Frothing Berserker would have grown to be a 3-4. It would have been a 5-4. Yeah, I would have had a 5-2 on the field and, and done nothing else in that case. But I would have had the weapon in my hand. However, I took a gamble that he didn't have a second Consecration, and because he didn't, I had much better board presence. I had an extra 2-1 and an extra 3-1 on the board. No weapon in the hand. But I think the minions were better in that case. Assuming they lived. Sun the Mage. My 2-drop is, of course, not a real 2-drop. Luckily, I am second. So, what I'll do is I'll mulligan one of the Berserkers. I'm hoping still to get a 1 or a 2-drop here. And I do. Alright, that's nice. This is a little bit better to be first player with this kind of hand than second player. Because you don't really want to coin out the Berserker without another 2-drop. Or you can, and just hope that Cleave goes live. Alright, we'll try it. This is risky. If she has a Frostbolt here, then I'll really regret this. But if she plays a minion, I can run the Berserker into the Mana Worm, get enraged, and then play Cleave to kill both of her remaining minions. Okay, so she neither had Frostbolt nor a minion, so my Cleave is dead at the moment. But we have an Owl that doesn't actually help me. I don't really even want to play the Owl. Nah, alright. Alright, we'll do this. And armor up. So I'm what I'm hoping for now is that she will um, use the Mana Worm to kill off the Berserker. And then my coin was essentially a way of getting rid of the Mana Worm without any dire consequences. Which is a secret. Well, the secret's probably a mere entity. If I'm a day. So I'm going to grab the Warfighter. Hopefully it is a mere entity. It is. Okay, that's great. So since it's a mere entity, we can just Wolfrider kill it. So her mirror entity was acting essentially as a three mana removal for my wolf rider. But it was preemptive, which gives it extra value. Alright, this is actually not too bad to see. It does give her a card, but at the moment I'm not that vulnerable to it, because I can play the Berserker, which survives against the Gnomish Inventor as a fellow 2-4. And I've got the Kodo, which will kill this next turn, unless it gets buffed somehow. By a Defender of Argus or Shattered Sun Cleric, perhaps. Shadows and Cleric would be very annoying here, because this would become a 3-5, and then she could ping away the Berserker after attacking into it. I'd be in trouble. Alright, we have that happening. Hmm. So I would, of course, like to kill off this guy with the Kodo. But I can't get rid of her no mission Inventor. So I have some options. I can either just play the Kodo and hope it hits the right creature, or... I could cleave, grow this thing, run into the Gnomish Inventor to finish it off. Hmm. Doesn't seem that great. Truth be told. The Wrathy Weaponsmith is an option. You know, no, I, I think the, the right move here is just to um, play one of my five drops. So I can play the Taunt, which will stand in the way of these guys pretty nicely. Or I can play the Kodo, which will kill one. Let's just play the Kodo. If I hit the Gnomish Inventor, that's fine. I think that's still the best option here. And it does hit the Gnomish Inventor. That's okay. Oedipus to Ogre is a little bit worrying. But we should be okay here, I think. So I could cleave, take this down to five, take this up to four, run that in there, and then finish it off. Yeah, this is fine. So we'll go ahead and cleave. Drawing my frothing berserker a little bit. Play weaponsmith. Hit the big dumb beast. Growing my berserker a little bit more. Trade my three drop for the six drop. Thanks. And then kill the photo. And now I've got board advantage. Of course, she could wipe it all the way with a flame strike, but she's got then five cards to my five. Even Stevens. And she concedes too. Wow, she was not happy about that. I mean, yes, it's, it was frustrating that I was able to clear out her board in such high style. Cleave definitely paid for itself there, that's that's for sure. 30 minions. Wow, in two games, I have played one minion that cost two mana or less. Hilarious. 
All right, let's keep on going, I guess. That was that was two pretty good games. Actually, the video is less than 10 minutes long. We've already finished two games. Those are some pretty quick concessions. Of course, I'm not going to blame my opponents either for their concessions, but I will give myself some credit for making some good plays. So I have tied my previous results as the warrior. One more game and I will surpass it. Not that that's a high bar or anything. No, not a high bar at all. Man, I'm looking at my stats sheet. Have I been remembering to put all my stats in here? Uh, I think so. I think I have. I think I may. Yeah. I think I might. Crippy. Okay, I don't think this is the Cripparian. But I think this is, if I remember right, some notable personage. Who I might have even played before, and if I remember right, they actually did, in fact, crush me. Alright, pretty dire opening hand here. We've got two drops that don't really work. Of course, if this guy gets off to a really fast start, the cleave might be handy. Well, there goes that dream, so the Argent Protector will, or Argent Squire will, survive. And I get another two mana spell that doesn't do anything, so these spells are not really working for me right now. Get an ugly choice next turn to either play cleave into his stuff, knowing that one of his creatures will survive. Okay, both of his creatures will survive. <laughs> or playing a Berserker, which is probably just going to die. Yuck. Well, we're going to play the Berserker. I think that's better than Heroic Striking this 2-drop. Two, two and the Rapid the Weaponsmith is a nice top deck that might help me catch back up if he doesn't really blow me away here on turn 3. This is a tense moment, though. He could just run away with the game at this point here. Ah, is he going to play True Silver Champion? Motherfucker. So I'll play a chill one yeti. Well, it's good and bad. It means my Farthing Berserker lives, but it means that I am in trouble. Okay, so let's think. I could cleave, which will grow this up to 4-4. I could trade then with the yeti. Or commanding shout and actually slow let us survive. But then, yeah, we need to play a creature. So let's go ahead and do this. And what I'll do is hit the squire. I can I can hit the Yeti and run the Berserker into it, or I could hit the Squire and run, grow the Berserker and kill that off. Yeah, let's actually do this. The opponent will have to work to kill the Berserker. Now he has a bunch of ways that he could. Oh wait, no, he didn't get damaged. Oh my God, I forgot about Divine Shield. Oh my God, that was terrible. Oh geez, that was. Well, I made some good plays in the previous games, but here I just sucked a giant load of dongs, practically inhaling them. Oh well, he has got the ooze to kill that for good measure. Yikes, I totally forgot that popping a Divine Shield would not grow the Frothing Berserker because that's not taking damage. That's just popping a Divine Shield. So I really should have just traded it for the Yeti because I ended up trading it for nothing. Oh man, this is ugly. Ugly, fuggly, bow bubbly. Alright, let's just cleave, see where this hits. Well, it did kill the Yeti, which is good. And I can either play the Blue Gill Warrior to kill the Ooze right now or play the Golem. Let's play the Golem. A little bit more durable. The golem threatens to kill both the recruit and the ooze. But uh, that was that was embarrassing. That was embarrassing to be sure. Yikes! And creeper. Well, here's where I would not mind a something. Execute or the owl even. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's slam. Slam a jam a ding dong here. We will heroic strike. Finish this thing off. And let's just go ahead and clear his board. Let's use the blue go warrior to kill the ooze and then kill the recruit. And so, smoke's cleared. He's got five cards. I've got four, soon to be five. I will get an extra card with the Drake, and this is also a cycler. So, okay. I'm hanging in there, but he did get me down pretty low. Below 20 here. Another one of these Gnomish Inventors, very irritating to deal with. Does he just make play Recruit here? That would be a boon if he did, because I can kill that with my Golem. Alright, that was pretty lucky. Alright, what is more important to me? The extra card, or the just the bigger creature? Let's go for the card, it's a little bit risky. But I'm going to draw the card here. The Zombie Chow is more important than two cards, or less important than two cards. I think it's actually more important to get this creature than it is to play two to get two cards right now. So we'll just do this. And hope that I can play Battle Rage at some other time for two cards. Hopefully I don't get totally cleared here. 
The Zombie Chow, even though it's turn 7, is just a 2-3 for 1 mana. Granted, I had a Mana Crystal left over, so I could have just played a 2-3 for 2 mana. But at least the Death Rattle is irrelevant because the opponent's at full health. Hmm. Next turn, I can Battle Rage and Ogre, or Commanding Shout and Ogre, depending on what I need. Very tense game. He's got a lot of cards. And life advantage. Now, Paladins aren't the greatest at burning you out, especially if you're a warrior and you can heal back up, but still, the life does need to be considered at least somewhat here in, in making my decisions. Sea Giant, that's a problem. Well, problem. And he has a secret too, so the Sea Giant might end up getting buffed by Avenge. Yikes. Oh, execute how useful you are how useful you are so the question is am i going to play battle rage this turn probably not because i think i need to play the ogre and execute i'd love to play commanding shout but i don't think i can afford such luxuries so i don't really believe that noble sacrifice would happen so we're just going to run this in oh it's noble sacrifice wow so people actually still play that okay well if i'd attacked with the zombie chow first in better shape, but that's fine. So we'll throw away the zombie chow. Yeah, throw away the zombie chow. Execute the sea giant. Kill off that thing. Play the ogre, and I'm still holding on to a thread of hope that I can play battle rage for two cards. I really wish I had one more mana that turn so I could have played the battle rage then, but uh, such is life, I suppose. Such, I suppose, is life. Got the Peacekeeper, but that's okay, because this might just mean an extra card for Battle Rage, if I am lucky. Alright, let's see if we got an Avenge or a Noble Sacrifice here. Alright, so let's kill the Recruit, or try to. Alright, is it Avenge? It's Avenge. Or Redemption. Yeah, it's Avenge. There it is. Alright, so now I can play Battle Rage for three cards, which is really good. One, two, three... Got a couple different options here. I think Slam is a pretty good one. Death's Bite could be used to kill us, but I don't really want to take six damage, so let's just play Commanding Shout. Ooh, even better, I think, than running in the Drake and going down to one health. Let's actually just play this Wolf Rider. Use that to kill off that thing. And hit him in the face. So this guy needs a Consecration. If he has a Consecration, he'd have three cards left to my four soon to be five. So I'm actually doing pretty good even if he has a Consecration, though I would still prefer him not to have one. Because that Drake and the Wolf Rider are a lot of damage. Alright. That guy makes me wish I had my Ogre. If I get an Owl, I could silence this. Cult Master? Oh man, well, I'm getting some good top decks, that's a fact. So we will play the Cult Master. And let's run the Wolf Rider and the Drake into that guy and give me some cards. Another Zombie Chow. Nothing. We'll play Death's Bite. Play a Raider. And am I gonna hit him in the face? I'm not gonna hit him in the face. Let's just pass the turn here. Hoping this guy doesn't have any oozes. I've got a 6-3, which is pretty solid. Now, a Hammer of Wrath's a very good answer to this, but it would give me a card as well as him. He really wants to use Hammer of Wrath on the Cult Master first. I'll kill the Cult Master in some other way before Hammer of Wrathing my 6-3. That's if he has a Hammer of Wrath at all. Also, there's a chance I could always find an Owl. I've only got 8 cards in my deck. Wow, I've drawn a lot of cards. Holy crap, I have to be actually kind of careful because I've still not started dealing any damage to him. But I've only got eight cards here. The Owl is one of them. I can actually silence the Sogre at some point. It will become a 6-5 all of a sudden. I then could do a good job. Mortal Strike only deals four damage at the moment. and won't kill anything super big. I'm 19 health above 12. I think I've got a decent chance of winning this, although I have drawn perhaps too many cards. I've drawn seven more cards than he has. I do have eight cards on the screen to his four, so definitely the card advantage shows. But if I'm not careful, I could either get burned out or lose to fatigue. He's really just one efficient board clear from being all the way back in this game because I'm pretty much out of big minions. What other big minions do I have? I've already used... No, I have not used Fen Creeper, so I've got that, and I've got a Kodo. So, okay, so there's actually three cards in here that I would really like. There's Kodo. Wow, there's um, Fen Creeper. 
Uh, oh, but the ogre now has just died, so no more of that. And he's got the silence for this. He decided not to silence my cult master because he sees I actually don't have very many cards left. Very smart play on his part, actually. And my owl comes a turn too late. A turn too late. Yikes. All right, well, it's Whirlwind. Kill off the Kodo. And, um, shoot, I should have played this first. I will draw this card, even though I'm getting a little bit low, because whatever, you gotta go for it. Do this, and this, and armor up. Don't wanna throw away this death bite. Especially because that would end up killing off my Cult Master. If I played the Arathi Weaponsmith, the 2-2 two -two weapon he gives you would make this just be destroyed. When it gets destroyed, it would deal damage to all minions. So right now, if I attack something, I will lose my Cult Master and the Novice Engineer. But I finally got some damage going, and then this guy would get enraged, which is good. Five cards is a decent amount of cards if I can keep board presence. Main problem is, if the Zombie Chow dies, he's up to 29 health, and I've pretty much gone nowhere. Two Zombie Chows in the deck. How often do I get them on turn one? Never. The other problem is he could kill my own minions intentionally if he has the right cards and let the cult master get me into fatigue. Mm. I really am lacking for big stuff, but um, I do have some burn potential with the mortal strike. So if I hit him with death's bite and mortal strike, that's 8 damage, 12, 14. Get in there and fight, Megan. Plus 95 is 19. Yeah, I've got a decent amount of damage I could, I could throw at this guy. My shield. Oh, unfortunately he has that. Well... Let's think very carefully here. Mm, do I want to get more cards off of the Cult Master? I could silence one of these taunters. I think it's gotta be the play. I'm gonna silence this guy. Um, I think I'm gonna trigger my weapon. So the cult master is dead regardless. Do I want to draw more cards? No, I don't. So we'll go. We're gonna go ahead and kill. Um, if I run the zombie chow into that, then the death spite will kill off the zombie chow. So we'll do this there. I'll run that in. Oh no! I just have to attack with this. This is gonna die. I hit the defender of Argus with my weapon. This thing triggers, kills everything, including unfortunately the owl. Play now a Fen Creeper, armor up, and I got nine damages, which is pretty good because it's only down to two cards. All right, if he gets a Consecration, though, I'm in trouble again because he would then be taking just three damage a turn. Three plus four total for this is seven. I'd be in a little bit of trouble. He's got Hammer of Wrath, so he's getting card advantage and clearing away minions. Still has plenty of mana. I think Hammer of Wrath he just top decked. He, he top decks a Consecration, which heals him for five and kills up two of my creatures. Pretty damn good top decking from this guy. He's at 19 health now. I can get him down by 7, which is now to 12. Down to 8. Alright. Well, what I'm going to do here is take a little bit of a risk. I'm going to hit this recruit with the Fen Creeper to start growing the Berserker. And I'm just hoping he doesn't have a good kill for that Berserker. Paladins would have a tough time killing this. It's got 4 health, it survives hammers, and then the Fen Creeper blocks Truce of a Champion. So I'm hoping that growing this guy was worth it. Compared to dealing an extra point of damage to his face. Woman champion. He's a pretty big guy. Pretty big guy. He did not play a recruit. I guess he didn't want to give any more opportunities for the frothing berserker. Cleverly done. All right, let's take a look at the situation here. Um, if I run both these guys into the Stormwind champion, that would be, this would become an 8-4. 8 plus 2 is 10, 10 plus 4 is 14. Is that worth it? Hmm. I could hit him just with everything. 4, 7, 10, 12. It seems a lot better. Yeah, it's way better. Watch this. Definitely. So now, Mortal Strike leaves him at 1 health, unfortunately. But I will play the Kodo and armor up. I do not know what my last two cards are. I, is there an Arcanite Reaper in there? If there's an Arcanite Reaper in there, I could win. If I could damage myself enough so that Mortal Strike would kill him, that could be good too. Got a Seeker. Okay, so he's out of gas. He didn't have any removal. I should be in good shape now. Reporting for duty. 
Well, that's it then. No matter what the secret is, I just clear it away by attacking and then I kill him with my berserker. Good old berserkers! So Crippy, the unofficial fan of Cripparian, goes down, and I think that that's actually Vengeance. I believe a long time ago I played him and he beat me. Soundly. As a paladin, I believe, if I... I mean, this is reaching really far back into the corners of my memory, but I believe that he was a paladin and, and beat me. So, we got some revenge here, and this deck has actually been performing really well. There were those two extremely quick concessions, and in that game, you know, I was in a little bit of trouble life-wise and uh, close to fatigue, but I did, you know, get the board control and kill him pretty smoothly. Apart from me running out of cards and that being kind of a worry, I was yeah. doing fine. Incomer with the three in place of an E, because he's cool like that. Well, this is the worst opening hand yet. Definitely don't want to keep any of these four drops. I did get an actually playable two drop, which is nice. But zombie chow? Can I get a zombie chow? Mother... No, can't get a zombie chow. Nope. It's like three games in a row where I'm second. Cannot get a zombie chow in turn one. Oh, he can! Motherfucker. Honest to God, Jesus. Heh, <laughs> greetings, he says. Okay, well, can't kill a blue glow warrior. The owl, I don't even want to silence this thing. At least he has a slow start, which is a good sign. I didn't see any fiery war axes in my draft. There's no real great way I can get rid of this guy. So we'll be playing double frothing berserker. Let's see if this warrior can kill a pair of two fours coming down the pike hole. The answer is probably... Probably. Hmm. He decides to grow my Frothing Berserker, perhaps in preparation for killing it with the Golem. Well, let's take a look at our options here. So I could silence the Golem and trade my Berserker for it. Then my Owl would trade with the Zombie Chow. I could run my Berserker into the Golem and then Whirlwind to finish everything off. Unfortunately, then, all I could do is play Zombie Chow. Seems a bit lame. I could play another Berserker and trade my Berserker for Zombie Chow. That seems really silly. Don't see the point of doing that. But the Owl here seems kind of silly, too. So, yeah, we will just do this. Whirlwind. And I might as well use up more of my mana here and play the Blue Girl. Rather than play the zombie chow, because I can play the berserker and the zombie chow next turn, which would be handy. Not a great start, though. Not a great start. He has a slow start, though, himself. He cannot play anything on turn four. Anything at all? Oh, he can play nothing on turn four. Well, when someone does that, you know, don't get too complacent. It probably means they have something good, big, coming up. But I, I fancy my chances of being able to kill a big thing, because... Got the slam here, which will take off two damage. And if it's something like a Gorobashi Berserker, I pretty much win on the spot with... Dakota. All right, he's going to slam my Berserker. I presume he has the kill for it. Maybe a cleave here. Yep, he's hoping to hit the Berserker. And he does. He didn't hit the Blue Go Warrior, though, so at least that's something. I could use my own Owl to silence the Zombie Chow here, or I could waste the Kodo. Crap. He didn't play anything, so I can't use any of these slams. Uh, all right, we'll use the Owl. I'm a little bit vulnerable to Whirlwind now, but I think it's better to be vulnerable than to Whirlwind than it is to um, waste a Kodo. I still have a hope that the Coda will get used. With two slams, I feel decent about my chances of killing anything big. I just want him to play an actual minion rather than killing all my stuff. Alright. Well, this sucks. I cannot play both slam and Kodo. So, I'll just sacrifice playing the Kodo, I guess. Slam. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, sure. We'll do this. My shield for Argon. So we'll kill off the Belcher with one of them. Kill off Sludge with the other. Gonna keep getting some damage through. So he's he's not been playing any removal, which is good. That's the one thing I don't want him to do is kill my stuff. As long as he... Well, he played Cleave and Slam, but I, I survived it pretty well. As long as I get to keep stuff on the board, I'm okay with this. I want him to play his own things. Ready, sir. Alright, and suddenly he's got lots of things to play. Spider's being particularly annoying because that really eats into my Kodo. Hmm. All right, another turn without a Kodo. Is that what's happening here? Um. If I Kodo, I could then cleave, maybe. 
I need to put this down, I think. The question is, do I kill anything before I put the Kodo down? No, I want to play this because this maximizes my odds of killing off the Squire. 50-50 chance. And of course I get the Spider. Of motherfucking course. Okay, so now let's kill off one of the Spiders legitimately. Play Cleave, hoping to get the two small things. And I do. And then whackity whack. Don't talk back. I've still got one more slam in my back pocket. Ah, that spider was so annoying. If I could have just killed a squire, I could have slammed the knight. The black knight drops, killing off my taunting murloc. And now the knight will get to kill off my defender. Mm, that's annoying. So I'll use the owl to kill off the knight, perhaps? Death's bite is an interesting possibility. I don't think that would really work. All right, let's slam for a card, see what we get. Berserker. Hmm. It's time for a little blow. All right, well, let's play all my minions out. He has five cards to my four, soon to be five. The Death Spite would enrage the Berserker, but that's two turns from now, so it's not that likely to come up. The, light the zombie child does give him an extra health, which is unfortunate. Sengen. And a mortal strike. Ah, that's annoying. Kills off the Kodo to minimize my damage. I'm not actually sure that was the correct play on his part, though. Alright, well, I could certainly use some card draw now. Do I want to enrage against the Argent Squire? Hmm... You know, I don't think so. Let's just hit him in the face. And as long as he doesn't destroy my weapon, we'll get to see how best to get rid of that Divine Shield next turn. Vital Smith is not an immediate problem. I can kill it with this guy. Oh my god, are you goddamn kidding me? Well, my board will kill his, which is good. Don't want to draw cards knowing this will get damaged as a result. I think I'd actually rather have the extra health on this card than um, on the on this Drake than see what my card is. So we're gonna hit the Dark Iron Dwarf, which destroys the weapon, killing the Argent Squire, enraging this, letting me trade that. That we're in a top deck war now with about equal life totals, and I have the first place, so I've got the advantage here, especially because I get a four-four body and an extra card. Ogre's kind of an unfortunate top deck. It's great, but I was of course one mana shy of playing it. He can now play two cards to respond to my one. Let's see if he's got a good answer. Usually in top deck wars, a 4-4 four, four is a pretty good threat. And he has a kill for it. So now he's got the first play. Let's see what he can make of it. Seems like the answer is nothing. I doubt he's got something that costs more than four mana. Oh, he, killed, he hits me in the face. He's going for the race. Interesting choice, my friend. Interesting choice. So, do I kill this thing? Well, I'm content to race, so I'll just hit him in the face. I could have cycled this for a card, but with that ogre there, I'm feeling pretty confident I can get two cards out of Battle Rage, and two cards should pretty much win me the game. As long as, of course, he can do the same. What does the Farseer is hold? great to see, because it's terrible. Behold, and Storm and Champion is free. amusing, but the Korkon still dies to the Drake, so I'm okay with it. Alright, perfect. So, this is actually really good. What we can do here is kill that guy. Draw two cards for two mana. Draw another card for two mana. Do a pretty good job drawing cards here. Will Mortal Strike this thing? And pass the turn. So now I've got a huge lead. Novice Engineer plus Execute will kill anything he plays. He needs removal for the Ogre. Like a Cruel Taskmaster would be good. Hey, that's another card I didn't see in my draft. No Cruel Taskmaster. It's a shame. Any concedes. As he well should. So I could have used the Axe plus Execute to kill that, or the Novice Engineer plus Execute to kill it. And then started bashing him with the Ogre. Pretty good times. Okay, one or two more games will fit into this video depending on speed, but we've had three pretty early concessions. This deck has performed really well after that rocky start losing a game. I haven't run into much trouble. Oh, except for that game against Crippy the Paladin where I almost failed to control the board as I was dashing headlong into fatigue.
Druid <laughs> Lewis for the Druid. Almost like Lucifer. Oh my god! Both zombie chows in the hand. Of course, now I'm first, so I cannot play them both with the coin. It's definitely better to be second with this hand than first, but you know what? What We are not complaining. No sorry, Bob, we're not. Zombie chow into zombie chow. Now, of course, the second zombie chow is not that impressive because it could have just cost two mana. I'm likely to have a mana crystal left over. But still. I got them both, and that's pretty good. All right, let's play the other one. See if this guy's got, you know, wraths and claws. I do, besides these guys, have nothing else going on, though. I'm going to be skipping turn three if I don't get a good top deck, which is a little bit sad. But such is life. All right, he plays a panther that'll take out one of my zombies. Ah, Frothing Berserker is a good top deck. So it's important to do the trade first. If I had attacked him first, the damage would have been negated. This way, I heal him for two, up to maximum, and then I drop him back down to 28. And I've got a 4-4 that cost me three mana. Pretty solid. I've got some really good choices next turn as well. All right, is he going to swipe me? Wrath me? I must Keeper. It looks like that's going to be a silence, yeah. So the Cult Master's not going to work super well here because... Can't kill anything against this keeper, but the Wrathy Weaponsmith looks very good. Hit him here. That, so that I'm safe, relatively speaking, from swipes. I've got a pretty decent board here for Cult Master. If he did play something like a Yeti, I'd be happy to just throw all this stuff at it and get a bunch of cards. Gnomish Inventor! Hmm. Well, let's think. I could play the Cult Master and get a card. Or I could play two creatures, which are both three health and safe from Starfall and Swipe. Well, that pretty much seals the deal, doesn't it? I will not be greedy. I'm going to just throw the Berserker away. I love having a board full of three toughness minions against a Druid because there's pretty much nothing a Druid can do about that. Apart from spell damage, Starfall, which he doesn't have enough mana for. So Swipe is very ineffective and Starfall is also ineffective, so it's kind of, I'm getting to have my cake and eat it. I can throw all my minions onto the board, yet still be totally comfortable against Mass Removal. Okay, so we've got two major options here. I can play the Cult Master and then throw a couple of things at this thing to get cards, or I can play the Boulder for Stogre and ignore that guy and just start, start, just start to work him down. Let's think. I, I'm hitting him for 6, plus 5 is 11 damage, he's at 10 health. I think we're just going to throw for it here. I'm still really safe from any kind of mass removal. Throwing creatures at this would just make me more vulnerable to mass removal. Because I'd be left with the 2-1 and then the, this 2 toughness thing. Now everything's a 3 toughness. He, mass removal of his still sucks. I have a 6-7 and he's down to 10 health. He's got to really demonstrate that he... That is card advantage. Well, he doesn't even have card advantage. He has 8 cards to my 7, soon to be 8. So yes, he has to demonstrate that he can actually um, defeat me if I'm overextending and going for the face. Alright, so he kills a zombie child to get 5 health. Pretty good move. I probably should have considered that a little bit more carefully. Plays a healer, so he gains 7 health this turn. And that's that. Alright, well, let's see what's going on. We have 6, 8... 12, 15. I can still actually just kill him. My seal for that was a bit sloppy with the defender. I should have used the Mortal Strike in case my arithmetic was off. But this way I kill him on the nose. Mortal Strike, I would have put him with two damage to spare. And he concedes. I level up to 51. Get a Golden Arcanet Reaper. Wow, that's intense. I'm not normally that impressed by the art on these Golden cards, but that looks pretty cool. And we're going to go ahead and end the video here. So thanks for watching, folks. If you enjoyed this video, do please like and or subscribe. And I'll be back soon to show you whether or not I can make it to 7 wins with this warrior deck. Take care, folks.